Hello and all, welcome to a Galaxy Man Show interview show. So for my very last guest of today is this incredible singer and songwriter known by the name of Taylor Ash. So I'm about to add Taylor Ash into the live now to have a chat with Taylor about her incredible music. So yeah, let's add Taylor in and have a chat with Taylor. Hi, Hi Taylor. How are you? Yeah, really good, thanks. I just want to say first up, thank you so much for coming on to my show. It's such a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you. Uh, to people that don't know who you are, Taylor, if you give like a bit of backstory about yourself and then we'll dive right into the questions. Sure, yeah. Uh, so, like you said, my name's Taylor Ash. I'm a singer-songwriter from uh, right outside the Philadelphia area in Pennsylvania. Um, and I have been writing songs since I was just very small. Um, probably my first song I wrote when I was like eight, I want to say. And um, I went to, uh, I studied music in college and... I studied classical music in college, which is a little bit, you know, of a different vein, but learned how to like compose and do film scores. So now that's kind of what I do now. I do a lot of, you know, writing music for podcasts. I write my own stuff. I'm working on an album and I teach and I teach music. So that's just a little bit about me. So, so we'll dive right into the question now, um, Taylor. So for my very first question, you've created incredible songs, past and present. And for the very first song I'm gonna mention, End of the Line, what was it like coming up with the idea of creating End of the Line? And what's the meaning behind this one? So End of the Line is a bit of a different vein for me in terms of like the genre of the music. It's more, you know, electronic. Um, and it really came about because I had started learning how to produce my own music. And I kind of just sat down one day and was like, let me just like mess around in Logic and see what happens. And the, the song kind of came out of that. Um, the inspiration, I guess, is, is kind of a little like mystical where it's, it's about kind of like life and death or what happens after you die. And if you've seen the music video, it's kind of in that vein, you know? So I guess that was the inspiration for it in a way. And I don't know why it just like kind of came as they like a lot of my songs. It just like comes out, you know, sometimes, but, uh, yeah. So that's what that, that was like. So, so, so for my very next question, so you've also created a song called After Amen. What was it like coming off the idea of creating this one? And what's the meaning behind this one? So um, this one also is self-produced too. So these, those two songs are my only like self-produced um, songs that I've, that I've done. Um, and it's kind of funny because they're both in the same kind of concept of what comes after the, the lyrics, what comes after amen, you know, it's like, what happens after you pray? Is there, you know, it, and it's a very much, you could see my headspace in 2020 was very, uh, like a little, a little dim, you know, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and so I think it was, it's, it's kind of like a cry, like the music video for that one is kind of about this character who like loses her faith in like religion and praying and everything and but then kind of finds her way back into it in herself a little bit so i think that's definitely the meaning for me and i and everyone can interpret it however they please that's the great thing about music is you're connecting to it in a different way that's amazing so yeah but that's what it means to me so on to our very next question so you've also created an original song called mm -hmm. void what was it like coming up with the idea of creating void and what's the meaning behind this one Okay, so Void is about, um, this was back, I wrote that song back in college, and back in 2014, I was actually diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder that really, like, de like debilitated me. Like, I was, like, walking around with a cane, like, it was, I had very, very severe joint pain, and it was, like, really scary, because, you know, like, in the hospital, they were, like, we don't know what's happening at first. Like we have, they had no idea because autoimmune disorders are very hard to diagnose. And after that kind of experience, once we knew what it was and like we kind of got settled, I started having extreme anxiety from just like the trauma of that event. And so void kind of came out of that, that feeling of like anxiety for the first time and dealing with that. Um, and just like dealing with all the like demons in your head and that kind of thing. So that's what that song's about. Yeah. So I'll say very next question. So you've also created an original song called Childhood Romance. What was it like coming up with the idea of creating this one? And what's the meaning behind this one? Childhood Romance, that's a, th that's a real throwback for me. That one's like a really old song. Um, so that one's about one of my like, like 
kind of childhood sweethearts, I guess, you know, we grew up playing together when we were very, very small. And then eventually we got to high school and we actually started like dating. So I wrote that for him and it's, uh, yeah, it's just like a cute little, like, I feel like it's a very indie kind of, you know, cute little song. So yeah, that's what that one's about. So I'll start reading your next question. So you've also created an original song called Far Away. <laughs> what was it like coming up with the idea of creating this one? And what's the meaning behind this one? Mm -hmm. This is this is also kind of an old one. That was very like kind of exiting high school into college. Um, I w I had a serious boyfriend, and I went to I went to college, and he went to a different college. And it was about like how when you're in a long distance relationship, you imagine all of the things that can happen and that can go wrong. And like in this character's head, it's like she's picturing him moving on and like telling telling the her that she, you know we're done because I found somebody else, you know? So that's where the inspiration from that one, like kind of came to be. That was, it, when I wasn't, nothing hadn't even happened yet, which is crazy. It was just like, again, it's like, you know, you do that to yourself in a long distance relationship. So, yeah. Awesome. So I'll tell you your next question. So what made you decide as a person and especially as an artist to get into singing in the first place? So this is kind of a funny story. Um, when I was, I first started singing in like the third grade. And the reason was we were doing, you know, like tall tales, like a play with tall tales and everyone was like assigned a role in the play. And for some reason they didn't have a role for me. And I ended up having to sing a solo, um, like a singing solo, which is even crazier because no one else was singing. It was just me singing. And I was like, why are you making me sing? Like, I don't know how to sing. And it was like really scary. And, uh, the music teacher, she like coached me and I think she realized, she was like, oh wait, she can actually sing. And I didn't know, I had no idea. And then I performed and then after that, the music teacher in my elementary school like just kept putting me in all of these, she made me audition for all these national choirs and I ended up doing a lot of national choirs when I was quite young. Um, and I would like fly, we flew to San Francisco one year with kids from across the country. And um, it was a really cool experience. Not really what what's got me into like choir and singing, I think. and. The rest is history. Now I'm still a singer, so thank God for that music teacher. You know, You're awesome. So I'm sorry. Next question. So it, who, like, who would be your like all-time inspirational person or music artist that you look up to music-wise in the music mm -hmm. industry? Um, so definitely, it kind of. I feel like I've gone through some phases of like being really obsessed with certain artists. When I was younger, it was very much like Sarah Bareilles, Ingrid Michaelson like just very kind of indie, like with very specific lyrics. I feel like that's what I'm really drawn to is like storytelling lyrics. So people like Sarah Bros, Inger Michaelson. And then like lately I've been really into Dodie and, um, oh gosh, what's her name? I really love, I mean, I do love Olivia Rodrigo too. I think though so. she's very, very cute and I like her songs a lot um I've been into music too and Billie Eilish I really like Billie's music I think it's very experimental very cool um and she's really inspired me to like really be creative with the way that you produce songs and well Phineas I guess is her producer but um yeah so those are like my big ones I guess yeah inspiration sounds like very next question so what does performing music mean to you like especially as an artist yeah it's pretty much it's everything, you know, I think, especially after this past year, like really honing in on like, not, you know, not being able to perform in a normal way that, so I think performing is just like where I feel the most at home, where I feel the most like alive and, and, you know, and I'm really enjoying myself anytime I'm on the stage or in the studio or doing anything like that. So so on to our next question. So if you could work with any top three music artists in the music industry, who would they be in a way? Yeah, I would say I would love to do a duet with like Miley Cyrus. I love Miley Cyrus. Um, she's very cool. And Dodie as well. Like, oh, Dodie and Julian Baker. Oh, I have like, I've got a, I have a list of like, it would be just so cool to do. Um, a couple of like, you know, thinking of like, male artists too like i love the killers like the lead singer of the killers um brandon flowers was, his name was escaping me for a second brandon flowers um uh, muse too i love muse they don't really do much touring or anything anymore but i love them um so yeah those 
Those would just be awesome. Be life, life made after that, you know? <laughs> awesome. So I'm sorry, next question. So what have you learned about yourself as a person and especially as an artist, like during COVID? Mm -hmm. um, this is a good question. I think I've learned that I'm more creative than I give myself credit for sometimes because, you know, I, I've had a lot of my friends who are also artists be like, you know, come to me and be like, wow, like you really put out a lot of content during that period of, you know, COVID. I think I'm, I'm proud of myself because it, it was, it was very difficult period for anybody who does music, art, you know, like theater, anything like that. And it's just, it was, it could, there was some dark days for all of us, I'm sure, but it was nice to just like keep like trying to think of creative ways to connect to people and to share music and to, and to learn too. I, I really learned a lot about production over the past in 2020. So, and I wouldn't have normally had the time to do something like that in like, if nothing had happened, you know, I'm usually pretty busy with like playing out and, and doing gigs and working. So it was like kind of nice to have just like, all of this free time all of a sudden. So I think I actually really benefited from a lot of it. Um, but, you know, I don't like to say it like that because it shouldn't have happened, but you know, <laughs> so um, yeah, but that's, yeah, that's how I feel. So on to our very next question. So mm -hmm. what are like the positive and negatives into the whole creating your music side to, to things and how do you get through those like negative moments as an artist? Yeah, so like positive moments, right, obviously, you know, releasing music, having people like it, having, you know, I think the, the negative moments I, I really think are mostly just like the self-doubt moments. And I think we all have that as artists is that like, am I doing this? Like, am I built for this? Am I made for this? You know, cause you, you hear a lot of like no's or like, I'm not interested in this or, you know, or you don't get people listening as much as you want. And it can be difficult to like get through those days and just feel it, you know. I think my advice is just to like let it happen, like just let yourself feel your emotions, and then pick yourself back up the next day and keep going because that's that's the way to do it is the drive to get things done and get things heard and and following your passion and your dream, you know. So, so I'm sorry, last question. So, what's like next for you, like music wise? for the rest of 2021 that you like to announce? So I'm releasing an album eventually. <laughs> it's It's been in a long time in production because of, um, I had like some vocal issues back like a couple years ago. So I had to like pause production and now it's fine. Then COVID. So it was another year of like not doing anything. Um, so it's pretty much like done we're literally putting the final touches on it um and now it's just kind of the rollout phase of like pr promotion and and that i'm hoping early 2022 though will be the full rollout but i'll be releasing some singles probably pretty soon which is exciting so yeah awesome. well would you like to perform one of your songs on the show by the way yeah sure i have my guitar i have my things <laughs> <laughs> um i'll perform a, a newer one if that's okay yep all right so this song is called um doesn't really have a name yet i think it's just going to be called stay away stay stayed away something like that but it's about um feeling being stuck in a toxic relationship so <laughs> I hear my voice today. That's the only thing that lets me say that I wish there was another way to live without you. And I hate my nose today. It's the only thing that gives away. The pretty painted words you say and all the bullshit that you see. Oh, 
And I knew that I would rue the day. Yeah, I knew I should have stayed away. They can never walk away. No matter all the things you do and say, they won't walk away from you. Cause I hate my brain today. Cause it keeps telling me to leave. Then it gives me reasons to believe. so much taylor for appearing on my show it's been such a pleasure having you on the show today it's, it's been a pleasure talking with you thank you for having me on your Great. show do you have any like last final thoughts that you like to give to people on the show um i guess stream my music if you if you like what you heard um and give me a follow on social media as i'm taylor ash music on all my platforms i'm way more fun on tiktok though you should go follow me on tiktok that's where i actually discovered you tiktok and i was like yeah oh, so I was like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Taylor. It's been yeah. such a pleasure. 